Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gabe from Scratch, and today we are looking at Hero Forge. I'm going to start you off with a warning. This is absolutely useless for game development. You can use it for your own in-house projects for sure, but unfortunately the license holds it back, which is a gigantic shame because quite frankly, this is one of the best character creation software out there, and this could be a game development tool with just a single change of their license. So hopefully in making this video, I can convince Hero Forge that that is a good idea. So what exactly is Hero Forge? Well, it's this tool for creating miniatures. Uh, so they sell printed miniatures, they sell digital miniatures, and they've got uh, versions that you can actually use in tabletop gaming software that actually comes down as a Unity 3D file, which is the old school way of um, storing web files in Unity. Uh, but you can actually bring these things down as STL files as well. And as I'm going to show you here, you could very easily use these in your own game. And you just can't, unfortunately, because of the license. So I'm going to show you this from the beginning. You start off somewhere like here. And what you do is basically pick from a number of different uh, archetypical characters. So you have goblins and uh, humans and turtle people and gnomes and elementals and so on and so forth. So we'll go ahead. We'll make a, a half elf this time. All right, so we got a half elf female going on. We'll go over here. You go to the head category. Uh, you pick the head style you want. So we're going to make her look a little bit, I don't know, dog-like? Sure. We're going to make us a furry. Actually, we're not going to make us a furry. We'll go with that. We'll keep that version there. you got control over all the various different aspects. So, for example, we can make the super pointy ear thing going on. We've got change out a very variety of different hairstyles, like so. So let's, yeah, we'll give her a long ponytail. All right, good to go. Uh, we could give her a beard as well. That's a... Uh, it's a very good look. All right, we'll keep with that. And you can just kind of keep going. You got control over all of the aspects of the head that can slot them together. Go over here, you've got control over how the body sets up. So if we wanted to make a skeleton, we could make us a skeleton. Sure, let's do that. Come here, we got a number of different clothing options here. And there's actually quite a few. And you're going to find that uh, we've got a number of different genres are covered here. So we got samurai here, we've got ninjas right here. Uh, and then we've even got some modern, so we've got a tactical armor space marine kind of set up here. It's such a shame that this doesn't work, because you could make so many different art style characters for your games using this guy. Sure, we'll go with that one. So sci-fi look, actually I kind of just lost my entire character's purpose here. So let's go back, uh, we'll make her some kind of a wizard. Alright, there we go. So we got our bearded wizard skeleton chick now. Uh, and we got control over, like those pauldrons on their shoulders look ridiculous. Let's make something a little bit more roundy. There we go. Good to go. So you got all kinds of accessories to dress these things up with. Um, we got gear that we can kite this person out with. So for example, we can throw a sword in the one arm. Here you can see there are a lot of weapons. We'll give her a hammer in one hand. We can give her a mallet in the other hand. Uh, we can give her a pair of uh, batons if we wanted. Uh, there's just so many options. We'll give her a bow in the one hand, then we'll give her a, uh, yeah, we'll give her a bow and a shield because that makes literally no sense. And you can just kind of keep going. You've got a number of different accessories you can go here, so we could give her a cloak or a backpack. As you can see, we can create just about any kind of character type we want. We've got control over the base. We can add things onto our base too if we wish. So there's a little dice. Which, by the way, if you're looking at this for its intended purpose to go ahead and make miniatures, it, it is peerless. It's a great little program. Uh, we can give her a mount. So let's let's put her on a wolf. There we go. So here we got our bearded lady skeleton archer shield woman on a wolf. We can pose it in a variety of... Well, we don't have a lot of pose options here because we put her on a mount. But we got different pose options. Unfortunately, there is no T-pose, which would have also made life even better. But it still doesn't matter because you could easily bring these things out, rig and animate them, as I will show you in just a second. So there is our miniature. We can go ahead and start coloring things. We can color individually. Uh, we can go thematically. We can do it in the body. We'll just do it with the theme. We'll get the whole thing all at once. You pick the color st style that you like. There we go. Boom. There is our colored, ready-to-go model. And then what we could do is go ahead, we could paint things out however we wish. So we could pick the various different uh, pieces that we wanted. So we could go here, and we could make that. Uh, go with something. Uh, let's go with something bright. We got a purple here. Let's let's make something. Purple bow. All right, there we go. So, uh, and we probably should give some flesh tones here. Lemoncello flesh. So you can see here, even the, the painting process is one of the best I've seen out there. This could be an incredibly capable modeling tool with just one change to the license. Because then you're done. Uh, then we've created our 3D model and you could basically start pumping out characters for your game with a very consistent art style in just seconds, basically. Or we could even go back to the very beginning and like literally just random out characters until we got something that we like. So there we go. <laughs> okay, I kind of merged this guy with his mount that time. 
Let's uh, undo that. Ooh, she's sexy. All right, so here we go. There's what we can create. And then when you're done and you like what you got, you basically can go ahead and buy it. At this point in time, you can order it in plastic and, and all those things if you're actually using it for miniatures. But where I found it interesting is for eight bucks, you can go ahead and download it. This one is tabletop simulator format. That's the Unity 3D format. What you'd actually want is this one, the STL file, which is for your own 3D printing at home. And that is the entire ID behind Hero Forge. And again, if you're using this for 3D miniatures, that would be pretty awesome. Problem is that license. And uh, now I'll come back to this particular bit. This part right here ruins everything. It's all just out the toilet now. Now you can still use this to create your own models for your own uh, personal game if you so wish. Like if you um, want to do stand ins or inspiration or whatever. However, Purchable downloadable 3D models that includes character designs, except as expressly provided in the term service, Sky Castle Studios retains all ownerships, rights, title, and interest in the 3D models. The models may be printed or otherwise used for personal, non-commercial use. So there's the downside. So you could use this in your own title, uh, but you cannot be resold, redistributed, or made available to third parties. So you can make it for your own title, but you can't really share it with anybody. So like I said, this, if they change this, if they just add like a game dev license or some kind of a license there so you can use these in your game, that would be just phenomenal. Because I actually went back to this little example here. This is from their FAQ. And you can find a couple of STLs. So there's... Um, and a Paladin and Explorer STL file you can go ahead and download. Uh, and what I did with these guys is I sent the Paladin, and I, I did a quick rig, so it didn't do a great job on the shield here at the back. You'd have to do some cleanup on the uh, the vertex assignments for the most part. But for the, like, this is a two-second job in Mixer mode. I'll do an auto rig, and it's pretty solid. And if you've got something like this, you can go ahead, so you can pull an STL file out, bring it into Blender, export it out as FPX or OBJ or whatever you want, send it up to Mixamo, and then you can pull it back down. And well, there, you can have this guy game ready. And the, the, the meshes it's generating, honestly, aren't bad. They're, they're, they're clean base meshes. It's easy to rig. They animate well. Everything is here for game development. You could literally create characters game ready in just seconds. And even more to the point, if we go back over here and we take a look at what they're actually doing here. So let's, we got this character I've got going on right there. I'll go down to the pose. You're going to see here, because you can switch between these different poses here. This means this guy is fully rigged anyways. They're doing it on their own and whoever, however they created this tool, they could export out game ready rigged models and you could just completely drop that uh, rigging stage out of the equation and all they need to do is want to. So I, I don't know. I guess that's somewhat why I made this video. First off, uh, Hero Forge team, you did a great job. And if you're in the market for a miniature creation tool, this is awesome, but if you're looking for a game dev tool, unfortunately, all that is holding this back is that license. So let me know in the comments down below, would you pay for characters out of this that you could use in your own game? And do you think the Hero Forge team should consider uh, making it so that digital downloads can work? But even if not, if you want to use this for your own game that you're not going to redistribute something for yourself, it is perfectly functional and creates really good looking characters that are in a game friendly mesh format. Uh, it's just unfortunately that license that's limiting you from using it for anything else. All right, so that was, that was a bit disappointing actually, but a really cool tool. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.